Hello everyone, uh, my name is Xu Piao. Uh, so today I'm going to present our work on smartphone authentication using built-in camera. So this work is done by our research, uh, research group in University of Buffalo and also colleagues from University of Central Florida. Um, so first, I'd like to introduce some background about camera identification. So the main principle is that uh, the manufacturing imperfection of the image sensors in camera will lead to certain pattern noise in the captured image. So this phenomenon is called photoresponse non-uniformity. So when we take a photo using a camera, the incoming light first goes through the lens and the color filter, and then it is converted to a digital signal by the image sensors, which consists of multiple pixels. But uh, due to the uh, limitation of manufacturer precision, these pixels are usually different from each other uh, in terms of dimension and also light sensitivity. So this will cause a non-uniform output signal. So uh, different from environmental noise, which is usually random, uh, the sensor pattern noise is persistent and unique in each individual camera. So you can use them to identify individual camera. So given, given a query image, we can uh, determine whether it is captured by a certain camera by this procedure. So first we can extract the reference fingerprint for a camera using multiple training images. So for conventional uh, digital camera, we need at least 50 images to extract the fingerprint. The more uh, image we have, the better quality of fingerprint we will have. And then uh, we can calculate the noise residual of the query image using winner filter, and uh, we compute the similarity between these two and to determine whether they are come from the same camera by using a threshold. So uh, here we use the peak to correlation energy as the standard similarity metric for uh, camera fingerprint matching. So the final identification accuracy is uh, depends on the quality of the fingerprint. So since uh, smartphone has become the most uh, popular photography device, and uh, it also is widely, uh, widely used in security sensitive tasks, such as mobile payments. So we want to ask a question, can, uh, can we use sensor pattern noise to identify smartphone camera. So the main difference between smartphone camera and uh, conventional dig digital camera is that the image sensors in smartphone camera is, are much smaller, uh, which reduces the amount of light it can capture and also leads to larger noise. Uh, smart, uh, smaller sensor, sa sensor also leads to higher non-uniformity because uh, Smaller sensors are more sensitive to the manufacturing imperfection. So this results in a stronger uh, camera fingerprint, which, which can help us to identify smartphone camera more accurately. So actually we can uh, determine, we can identify smartphone camera using only one image. So to prove this, we did experiment using uh, different smartphone models and also images collected from Amazon Mechanical, uh, Mechanical Turk. So we uh, extract res reference fingerprint using one image and then perform fingerprint matching. So uh, from the result, we can see that the correlation between matching image pairs are much larger than for the non-matching image pair. So by using a, a proper threshold, we can achieve a near uh, over 99% accuracy for uh, smartphone camera identification. So based on that, uh, we further explore smartphone authentication using built-in camera. So the application scenario is like this. Here's a user and a verifier. The user wants, wants to prove her identity to the verifier using her smartphone as a security token. Uh, so the verifier first challenges the user to take a photo by the uh, visible light communication channel. Uh, then the user will respond to the 
verify by sending back the, the photo HD text through wireless channel. And then the ver verifier will authenticate the user's smartphone using the built-in uh, fingerprint. So uh, the solution for this scenario could be pretty simple. So suppose there's a user, Bob, who wants to get some money from an ATM. The verifier will require an image taken by Bob's camera. And uh, Bob will send the image to the verifier to perform fingerprint matching. And uh, the verifier can confirm that the user is Bob after, uh, after matching and then send him the money. But uh, today, people like to share their photos on social media. And these photos are really available to the public. So using a uh, user's photo, the adversary can actually uh, achieve, can pass the authentication without the user's smartphone. Sorry. So what the adversary can do is that he will claim his Bob, and uh, he will send an image downloaded from Bob's Facebook to the verifier. Since this, cam uh, this image is taken by Bob's camera, the verifier will uh, match the fingerprint and uh, believes that this adversary is Bob. So to address this, uh, address this issue, we propose to perform liveness detection by challenging the user to capture a fresh QR code. So QR code is well known uh, for accurate uh, data encoding, and uh, it is very efficient. And it is also easy to randomize and uh, easy to align. So we can uh, check the, the image submitted to the authentication system to see whether it matches the challenge we propose to the user. So uh, in this way, pre-existing images cannot be used to pass the authentication. However, uh, the camera fingerprint is still not secure enough for authentication because adversary can actually inject a user's fingerprint into any image. And he can even remove the fingerprint of his own camera to make the quality of the forged image better. So the adversary could launch an attack like this. Again, he will claim his Bob. And uh, at this time, the verifier will ask him to take a photo of a QR code. After taking the photo, the adversary download an image from Bob's Facebook to extract the fingerprint of Bob's camera. And then he will inject the fingerprint into the, into the photo and send it back to the verifier. Because this photo contains the fingerprint of Bob's camera, so the verifier will be fooled again. So how can we defend against this attack? So we need to detect the forged images that carry injected fingerprints. So let's take a look uh, at uh, what's the difference between normal image and a forged image. Sorry. So normal image uh, simply contain the environmental noise and uh, the fingerprint of the Legit legitimate user's camera. But uh, to generate a forged image, there is an extra step of fingerprint injection involved. So the result is that uh, the forged image carry the fingerprint of both user's camera and the adversary's camera. So by, at, uh, by detecting the extra component in the forged image, we can detect the injection attack. So uh, to, to uh, defend against this attack, we proposed the so-called correlation test. So we first re uh, revised the challenge response scheme uh, by challenging the user to take the photo of two QR codes instead of one. And then we calculate the similarity between one of the noise residual of an image and the reference fingerprint. And then we also calculate the similarity between the two noise residuals. So for normal image, uh, the, noise, uh, the, the two correlation will be very similar because they both contain the same legitimate user's fingerprint. But for forged image, the two noise residuals will share an extra common component, which is the foreign fingerprint of the adversary's camera. So as a result, the correlation 
uh, the second correlation will be much larger than the first correlation. So by comparing the two correlation value, we can de uh, detect the injection. So to evaluate the, this detection method, we use images from uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk, and we construct following image pairs. So uh, as shown in this figure, the relative quantity of the two correlation value be, uh, for normal image is clearly different from forced image. So using a proper threshold, again, we can detect this attack very accurately. So now the authentication workflow is like this. So we perform the QR code matching and fingerprint matching and the injection detection. But uh, the injection detection is based on the checking the existence of adversary fingerprint. So what if the adversary removes his fingerprint? So we need to detect this uh, fingerprint removal detect, uh, pro process. So again, let's check the difference between normal image and forged image. So to remove a fingerprint from an image, uh, we need to use a denoising filter, which will actually remove all the white Gaussian noise in the image. So the random noise will, be, will disappear in the forged image. But uh, since it's random, it cannot be used to detect the, uh, forgery. So we propose to embed a probe signal that will also be removed by the denoising filter used uh, for fingerprint removal. So uh, it must be sensitive to the denoising filter it, and, and it should be able to be captured by the camera. So we choose to use a white Gaussian noise as the probe signal. So only the uh, normal image will contain the probe signal so we can detect such attacks. So we'll calculate the similarity between noise residual and the probe signal and judge by a threshold again to, to see whether it is a forged image. So to, uh, to evaluate the effective, uh, effectiveness of this method, we conduct experiments in different settings. First, we provide the target scene with no probe signal. Then we take a normal image of the target scene with the probe signal embedded. And last, uh, we perform fingerprint removal on the image we take. So the uh, similarity between the probe signal and the, the noise residual of the image is shown like this. So in setting two, the signal, uh, the correlation is much larger because the probe signal is preserved in the legitimate image. However, uh, after fingerprint removal, the similarity drops uh, significantly because the probe signal is not, um, is suppressed in the forged image. So we can detect the first image accurately. So our authentication protocol now works like this. So the user will send uh, the QR code of the, the picture of two QR codes to the verifier, and the verifier will match the fingerprint and then perform a sing, uh, sequence of actions to detect, attack, uh, to detect all possible attacks. So the, detect, uh, the de detection of the attacks are, uh, involves these three components. So first, uh, forgery attack is detected by the checking the QR code, and then we check the fingerprint uh, to see whether the identity of the, of the user is correct. And then uh, injection and the removal attack are detected by checking the adversary, adversary's fingerprint and and the probe signal. So to evaluate our, evaluate our efficiency, uh, we did experiment for the four parts. So actually these four processes can all be done in parallel. So the image content matching, injection detection, and removal detection can all be done just within one second. The only time consuming part is the fingerprint, ma fingerprint matching because it, it requires a uh, denoising filter. So uh, for different ima image resolution, we show uh, the total time consumed for our authentication system. So for most common uh, image resolutions, our authentication can be finished within four seconds. So we also did extensive experiment to evaluate uh, 
what factors can affect the photo response non-uniformity? So the details uh, are in the, in the papers, but the conclusion is that the PRNU does not change over time, and that only the ambient light, ambient light intensity can affect the fingerprint. And also the image render resolution and the strength of the fingerprint is positively correlated. So in conclusion, this is the first work to enable smartphone authentication using a built-in camera, so which achieve accurate and efficient identification. And our solution is also resilient to fingerprint attack, uh, including leakage and uh, forgery. Thank you. Um, nice work, um, Ben Zhao, University of Chicago. Um, quick question. So there's been some uh, prior work on sort of unique identification using physical defects and, in, in, you know, wireless radios and stuff like that. Uh -huh. I mean, is this yes. fundamentally, I mean, this is a very interesting sort of, you know, uh, model for, for generating image-based authentication. Um, mm -hmm. uh, can you use generically any type of physical defect that's uniquely, you know, uh, identifiable to a single device to do some of the kind of things? Yeah, generally speaking, uh, yes. But uh, I think the uh, special interesting point about our work is that we are the first to use the camera fingerprint to, for smartphone authentication. So we leverage the smartphone as a security, uh, security token for the users. So generally speaking, uh, the hardware imperfection can be used uh, for identifying all different kinds of sensors and uh, hardware. So uh, one thing I found very interesting about the paper was all the ways you thought about the attacker can do this, and, and including up to the random noise edition. Mm -hmm. But one thing I wasn't sure about is um, if these are clean images being produced, Right. Uh, wouldn't the attacker be able to detect and understand the random noise? Because it's not like this is images that were produced with a camera, right? So they're images that you're generating on the fly, so they should be relatively clean. So if you were to look for the random noise, couldn't you also then kind of save that, do the work, and then add back in the random noise? Uh, did you consider that as part of your attack model? So you mean using a very high-end camera, there's like little noise in the... No, no, no. So when, if you're a, one of your bank tellers and you're generating one of these QR codes, it's not uh -huh. generated using a camera, right? You're going to generate it kind of using a PNG system. Yes. And then add noise to it, right? But right. wouldn't you be able to see that noise in some way and then like extract that out, do all the work, and then put it back in at yes, the end? Yes, the prop signal we embedded is uh, white Gaussian noise. And in our experiment, we showed that the, the, the prop signal can be preserved when we take a picture. So the QR code uh, will give us the information. So it will let us know that the prop signal is still there. It can be extracted. So as shown in the correlation tests in the experiment, uh, so the after in embedding a prop signal, the correlation is much higher than without the, the prop signal. So does that answer your question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Cool. All right. Let's there you go. Hi, uh, I I say that this uh, uh, this technique can be used for forensics, for example. I mean, right. if you s scan Facebook for all the photos that uh, it has, and you do a map between each user and its uh, fingerprint, okay, of the cell phone, you can say, okay, you took this picture, for example, right? Am I right or, or this? Uh, for forensics, yeah. Generally speaking, uh, it can be used for forensics, but. Uh, we only consider for authentication purpose, but for forensics, there may be other high-end high uh, attack possible. So whether it is suitable for be, to be used for forensics is still like we need to investigate. Ah, okay. It could be a future, future work. And also another question is how, it is, uh, how much it is uh, resilient to, uh, I don't know, filtering like uh, HDR, which is quite common nowadays, uh, or other post-processing techniques that uh, cell phone use? Uh, when we did the experiment, we didn't uh, find a clear impact of the, the HDR on, the, on our detection accuracy. So
So we could uh, specifically investig investigate the effect of that maybe in the future. Thank you.